<laughs> this job that we do, we do it because we care about saving lives. We do it because we want to make a difference in someone's life. I meet with women antenatally and offer support and advice. And then once the babies are born, um, I see them at home, uh, meeting the whole family, supporting around child development and any issues that parents may have. Our main focus is uh, supporting families with children with complex needs. The most important thing is the small changes that can have a massive impact on their life and the life of their child or children. No. No. There are times when you give advice and then there's times when you actually need to give practical resources that work. Sophie came up with the idea during a team meeting. We were talking about the families and how they didn't have many activities going on with the children and the kids were getting fed up. It's been tough for the children, especially when they're out of their routine. They can't go to school or nursery, you know, and they can't run in the garden. What we need to do as a team is to... We identified the families that were dealing with the struggles they were having during COVID and the support that they didn't have. Parents with children with autism, with Down syndrome. I was really, really worried how I'm gonna look after her, how I'm gonna cope with other children, how I'm gonna cope with other things. They had to have the children at home for an extended period of time and being with them every single day, they were not able to know how to manage some of the difficulties. Many of them have got sensory needs whereby they need to be moving. That is part of their self-soothing calming. We came up with like the resource box. The gift box idea. It's a sensory box. We are human beings before we were nurses and we are people before we became the professionals that we are now. Not becoming too attached is quite uh, difficult because you get to get into their shoes, you, get, you become no, no. empathetic. <laughs> How can I not become attached to the children and the families? I don't think attachment is a bad word at all. I do whatever it takes to support my families, yes. I'm here because of the families and children. I'm here to visit them and I'm here to make a difference. In the box, we were able to put a behavior communication fan, which talks about, you know, managing behavior and parents can use with their child. We were able to put some sensory bowls they light up and they're really good for them to feel Thank the you. textures exactly. Wow. It encourages uh, a lot of engagement between child and uh, the parent. Sensory ball! <laughs> they're not really toys just the child can use, but it was resources that the parent needed to use with their child. <gasps> wow! So those are just few things that went in the box to equip parents during COVID times. Noima, she's a Down syndrome. She was born in 32 weeks. If I have any concerning about her or any help or anything, just I need to, I call Victoria and she give me support in her. She has a, a, a difficult to, to understand if I'm happy or I'm sad. And I think 
I think we will we'll have this one. This one. Yeah. Look, happy. Happy. <laughs> Overall, it was such a big hit because parents were so glad there was something there for the children to do and kind of help the parents get through this time as well because it kept the children engaged and kept the parents engaged and it was just such a helpful thing. It made me feel like a part of something that is having a positive impact. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. 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 When I see the families developing, accepting their diagnosis, managing to put it in perspective and get on with their lives and be as healthy and happy as everyone else, that makes me happy. Bye. Bye. My team is an amazing team. The difference that is making, it just gives me so much joy. I can never express what it means to me because it's like in my heart. It's just in my heart, yeah. My name is Victoria Inyola. My name is Sam Menta. My name is Charity Makore. My name is Zara Ahmed. My name is Nelly Chawira. My name is Edgar Bloy. My name is Fawn Besley. My name is Petronella Johnston. I'm Sophie Njiri. I love what I do. And to me, nursing was never a job. Health visiting was never a job. What I do is a vocation. It's a part of my life. And it's like, when I do it, it's like next to nature. Hello everyone and welcome to the Supporting Children with Additional Needs Parent Webinar. Lovely to see so many of you here today and in the room. My name is Dawn Henry and I'm an Early Help Coordinator and I manage the Early Help Hub, which is a service that supports families with a range of difficulties across Newham. So today we're joined by a, a panel of people that have a specialist knowledge of SEND and they, you'll get to see them a bit later on during the course of this workshop. But as you can see, we started with a video of the specialist health visiting team and the work that they do. And you're going to be hearing a lot more about other support services that you may be able to access going forward, or you may be already uh, known to those services or accessing support. So we're going to go into a lot more about that. Before we get into all the support services, we thought it might be a good opportunity right now to do a little bit of a poll with you to get an understanding of some of the needs that you might have and support and also to give an opportunity to ask questions because we're looking at what we're going to do going forward. So the plan is that this will be the beginning of some further sessions that we're hoping to do with you all that may be theme based. So the more information that you provide to us today, the better informed we will be in terms of tailoring those sessions going forward to meet your needs. So what I would like you to do is the first time that <laughs> uh, we really ask people to do this, we are look in a workshop or anything, is to ask you to pick up your phone, your mobile phone. And I want you to go to that website that you can see right now called Slido. Dot com. If you can go to that website right now, put, you could put in Google, if you go to that website, and when you get there, you'll see a little box, empty box. If you could put in the number 11475, 11475, and it will take you to a polling. So I'll give you a, a couple of minutes to do that. If you could just go to slido.com 
And when you get there, you'll see a little box put in 11475. 11475. And then once we've done that, what's going to happen is that we're going to launch free polls and you'll be able to see the results of those polls live. And that will inform our understanding of what you need. It's really important that you be honest and open. We're encouraging you to be honest and open with us and to complete that poll for us. OK, so just to repeat, Slido.com or you could put Slido in Google and it will take you there. And when you get there, put in 11475. I'm having a look at my phone at the same time. If we can move to the next slide, please. And we're going to launch the first poll. So the first poll should come up. Ah, lovely. Someone's putting questions already. So when you go on there, you'll be able to put a question as well. So there's a question answer function. So if you have any questions, start populating it. You can ask as many questions as you want. It could be that you're thinking about what I've just said and so what kind of services is that? What are you thinking of doing? It could be that you've had a concern. It could be that you've had a really positive experience. Whatever you want to put in there, you can put in there. We'll review it as we go along. So keep on populating it. Don't hold these questions to yourself. The more we know, the better informed we have. So when you go to Slido, when you go to Slido, I can see some question in there. There is a little box, an empty box. It's like a search box. You put the code in that box. Okay. You put the code in that box. It says enter code here. Can you all see it? If, if you could just put yes, yes, yes in the chat box, then I know you're more or less ready to go. Yeah. So if you put enter, where it says enter code here, you put in 11475. You still can't see the box. Are you on Slido? Yes, got the code. Okay. Okay. There is a box. Yes, got the code seen it. Okay, lovely. All right. We're going to press ahead. For those people that can't see the code, just put your answer in the chat box where you've just been putting your question. So just put it there and I can pick that up as well. Okay, so the first question is, what additional needs does your child or children have? Now, you should be able to see it there now. Natalie, you should be able to see it live on here. You might have pressed press present. Oh, it's, it's presenting. On um, your side. Yeah, the, the slide is presenting. I'm not sure why it's not coming up. Um, uh, bear with me, I'll bring it down and back again. Yeah, because the ball hasn't launched on the... Um... Two seconds, we're just going to check. If not, I could do it. Yeah, it's not showing for me. You might have to okay. share. Okay, all Thanks. right. Let me try on my slides. All right, you should all be able to see my slides. Okay, let's have a go. Aha, can you all see that? Nasty, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay, right. You should be able to see it now on your phone. So if you can make a selection here. So what additional needs does your child or children have? Is it autism, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, global development delay, visual impairment, hearing impairment, severe learning difficulties? moderate learning difficulties, physical disabilities, or others that are not mentioned here. So, so far, four people, six people so far, continue, continue. 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 We'll leave it for a little bit longer so that people could get on it. 
just to repeat, to go into the poll, you go to Slido and then put in 11475 in the box where it says put in the code. Lovely. So we're coming through. Uh-huh. Okay. So at the moment, it looks like that 33% of you have children that have ADHD. Oh, no. No, it's changing again. <laughs> so we've got neck and neck. So others, so some are not mentioned here, so it falls in other category. For those who have put other, if you can put what the other is in the chat box on Zoom, that would be really, really helpful. Or you could put on question and answer section, wherever you want, we'll pick it up. And 20% of you said that you have a child with autism. 10% have a, oh, no, it's moving again. <laughs> So 36 fall within the other. So we haven't captured everybody on here. Okay, that's useful to know. And 8% of you have a child with Down syndrome and 8% with go with development delay. I cannot see the others, hold on. Nothing on the others here. Okay, brilliant. Okay, that's given us some idea. I know there's more of you in the room that are not captured because it's only shows 12 people have responded. So it would be really useful to know what, what yours are and if you could put it in the chat box so we could really look at that a bit more. So a lot of, especially with the others, we definitely need to know. Hearing impairment, 8%, go with the 8%. Okay, so this poll, don't worry if you have haven't done it yet, it's going to remain live so you can continue populating it once you get onto it. Okay, so we're going to try and launch the next one. Okay, one second. So what would you like support with? On this one, I want you to populate that poll now with what you need support with, with keywords. If you could write any word in that box now, what support would you like with? So I'm going to enter a word now and see if you can see it. Aha, brilliant. So I put down respite. What else? Populate as much as you need. So I see behavior challenges. Anybody else? So just two people so far. What would you like support with? Sleeping, housing, keep on going. The more you test, the more we know. Not sure what that means, that one. Carry on. What else do you need support with? Sensory processing. Yeah, say a little bit more. What else do you need support with? Anything else? Keep on going, keep on going. Housing needs, okay. At the moment, it seems the biggest one is behavior challenges that people are facing. Is that right, Natalie? And housing. Yeah. yeah. See, fussy eating, immigration, sleep, okay, dyslexia, behavior, stress management. Parental rights. Okay, whoever put parental rights, say a little bit more about that. What is it about parental rights? Respite, general advice, schoolwork. Okay, okay. Keep on going. 14 people so far. Keep on going. And those professionals that are in the room as well. If you come across parents, what are the kind of things that they say they need support with? If you wish to populate that, that'd be really helpful too. So professionals that are in the room, please feel free to populate as well. Now I see youth work, is it youth work or sensory, speech, behavior? Uh-huh, okay, lovely. Keep on going. We're going to keep that open. I'm going to go to the next and the last poll. Toilet training. Oh, that's come up a lot. Toilet training. All right. So the top three was toilet training, behavior, challenging behavior, and housing. Yeah. Okay. We're getting this, we're getting the gist. Keep on going. Keep on, anything that pops into your mind, just populate it. We've got time today to really get understanding what's going on for you. Child's anxiety, sibling support. Good, good. Keep on going. You're getting the gist of it now, aren't you? 
keep on going, keep on going. Right, so that's going to stay there for a little bit. I'm going to move on to the last poll. So which service is supporting you right now? Is it that you have a child that's open to the 0 to 25 disabilities team, open to social care and receive a package of support? Is it that your child is known to early help service? Are you part of a parent support group? Have you or are you attending a parenting program such as Triple P, EPATS or so forth? Are you known to the language communication and interaction service or complex needs team or sensory team? Or is there another service not listed here that you are known to or your child is known to? Or are you not known to any service at, at, so, at all? Okay, so at the moment, keep on going. 57% are saying that you're not known to any service, not receiving any support. Your child is not receiving any support for any service and it's not connect with the um, social care sensory team and other service. For the other service, if you can please note which service they are, whether you put it in the Q&A or if you put it in the chat box on Zoom, I don't mind which one, but please let us know which services. None of you have said you're open to the early help team and you're not uh, attending the parent support group no one's mentioned parenting programs or the other ones. Okay. Anybody else wants to put on it? There's 10 people. There's more in the room. So if you could, I'll leave it for a couple of more seconds just to make sure. So it's now gone down to 40% other, 50% other services, 33% no services whatsoever, which is concerning. A little bit concerning. Oh, it's gone up again. Neck and neck. Okay, so keep on going, keep on going. But we're gonna move on now. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you, we'll keep an eye on that one. Okay, so thank you very much for giving us a little bit of insight of what's going on. We may ask you some more questions as we go on with the workshop, but I just wanted to start to tell you about where your point of reference is. I don't know if you all know about the Family Information Services Send Local offer and where to find information that might be helpful to you, your child and your family. Your first point of call of reference would be the www.families.noom.gov.uk. So if you go to that website, you should be able to find a directory of services that might be helpful and supportive to you. So you can have a look on there. There's a lot and all services are populating it with information, up to date information on their services. So the first point of contact for you will be to go to that website. Okay, Natalie, what I'll do, do you mind taking over now with the slides? Oh, yeah, we'll yeah? do. Yeah, I'm going to bring no mine down Dang. now. Much easier for me. <laughs> yeah, so I would suggest that you go to that first. Oh. Where is health is, yeah. I didn't put it on there for on purpose, Sophie, so you could talk about it. So don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. Lovely, okay. I'm just waiting for Natty to bring it up. Please keep on populating the question answer. There may be things coming up as I'm talking, as other people talking, please populate. We will go back to those questions when we have a little bit of time at the end. So I'm now going to hand you over to E. Eva from Mencap. Eva, are you here? Yes, I am. Hi, everyone. Would you, would you like to be? Yeah, lovely. Okay, I'm off. Hi, everyone. So my name is Eva Troop and I'm a family engagement worker for Mencap. I joined Mencap in September last year and now I'm working in partnership with Senko team and I'm based at Ronick. And part of my role is supporting families with children with additional needs, north to seven years old. So part of this workshop, I would like to talk about how Mancap and London Borough of Newham are working together. So again, if you got any questions, please join and answer. We can able to answer our questions a bit later on. So what are Mancap doing in Newham? So we are working in part on parenting support program at the moment. We started this program two years ago. So we are developing opportunities for families who have children's special educational needs and disabilities 
So we invite parents to join family support groups online or face-to-face. -face. We develop parents' understanding of SND, working together with other families who understand and cares. We invite parents to work along, alongside services as co-facilitators and take part in planning and decision-making as well. So we also share skills and ideas and um, explore volunteering roles. If families want to work or volunteer for us, you're all welcome to join us. And also we find the support families looking for. So MENCAP and uh, NUM SND Hub are connected with families, helping them access the right support and improve families' well-being. And during the first lockdown as well, where we created 300 resource bags and distribute around Nuam. So all the families who are young, younger children north to four received resource packs. So it was one of our, our projects as well. So if you want to find out about how to get involved with us or find more about our workplace, please contact me. All my details should be on the next slide. Oh yes, it was already here. So we can send the email or contact my telephone number as well. So can I move on to the next slide, please? Yes, this is my telephone number here and the email address is there. And if you have any questions or worries, please contact me and I'll try to help you. So I can move on our next one. So I would love to talk about a little bit about uh, disability living allowance. So disability living allowance, DLA, is for parents and carers to help with extra costs of looking after children who are under 16 have difficulties walking, has social communication needs or any additional needs or support required. So reason we raise concerns and sort of talking about it, the take of DLA for under 16 in Nuram is very low. So we feel that we need to raise awareness with parents and talk about it a little bit more. Disability living applications is long, repetitive, sometimes very time consuming and uh, sometimes quite a bit challenging document to, to complete. So, um, and also one part is quite a bit of a difficult and emotional process for parents as well to complete this document. So what we decided so far, we produced disability allowance awareness poster and distributed the allowance and to lots of families. We will be receiving calls from families who need support with the forms. Families will be referred to our family connectors. We will be able to support and provide one-to-one -one support how to complete disability living allowance forms. We are also looking at easy read format for families who have English as additional language. We're working on that. We are looking to design disability living allowance workshops for family connectors and family support workers across the borough, which will be support and help parents to complete disability allowance forms. We would like to look into recording an info video for parents watch online. So how to like a pre-workshop, so completing disability allowance forms. We will also develop short online workshops for families to access. So we plan a lot of things, it's gonna become soon, it's in progress now. So if at the moment, if you need any help, please contact your local health visitors, Senko, Children's Centre or child, or child care provider, it should be supporting you with this. If you've got any questions, please contact me as well and I will support you and direct you, you know, if you need that. We also, you can also can contact Department of Work and Pension and ask for the, form under 16, where we'll send you by post. Other thing you can do, you can uh, ask for download the claim pack or go on www.gov.uk disability living allowance children and download the pack. Thank you. So I'm going to move on to the next slide now. What currently we offer now? Currently, at the moment, we're offering free weekly SND coffee catch-ups. So we invite parents to join us for a virtual chat to meet our parents and explore how MENCAP could support you during this lockdown, parent champions in local area, and support groups for parents with children special additional needs. And um, those, those sessions taking place every Monday, 
10 to 11.30 every Wednesday, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. and every Thursday, 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. This, those sessions is no targeting sessions. It's very parenting-led and we talk all different topics, just join us. And it's nothing, we have got guest speakers, we just talk about whatever comes that day and what the parents want to ask some questions and we talk about sleep, toilet training, all, all sorts of things. So you're all welcome to join us. So can I move to the next slide, please? Thank you. We also open SND support hotline for families who have children under fives with special educational needs. So families can contact us Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays on the phone and ask for any support they need. For example, if you just need listening ear, even to talk about something, or we can sign post into your local services. We give advice and ideas about how to support children at home during the lockdown. So you will all welcome contact is a three times a week because at the post is not very, not very clear. So I would say Tuesdays, 9.30 till 12.30, Wednesdays, 9.30 to 12.30, and Friday, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you. So I'm gonna move on on second part. I'm gonna talk to those who don't know about EPADS. I'm gonna just discuss a little bit more. Um, the EPADS is the early positive approach to support calls. And EPADS is eight weeks session group that provides sensitive support and information for families in early years. It's for children north to five, and they don't need to be diagnosed. So those families can attend. All groups are delivered by trained parent who has child with special educational needs and professional. All the sessions are on all across the borough in seven children's centers. And, and those sessions are face-to-face -face session. We really hope we can start delivering these sessions again after Easter holidays. This is our plan. So EPAS focuses on well-being for families and sessions include accessing services and support, for example, benefits, or what's available in Newham, how to look after yourself, how to support children sleep, how to support children communication, fostering life skills through act active development, and responding to challenges and challenging behavior. So if you know any family who may benefit from attending this face-to-face -face session, please complete early notification form on the London Borough of Newham website I will share the link below later on, on our chat. So you're all welcome, but your nursery or, or anyone can refer, or children's centre can refer to attend this training. Thank you. Can I move to the next slide, please? And I think I covered those things. Can I go to the next one as well? All right. So also we have a um, Facebook group for families to support each other. So we'd like to encourage you to you know, join us. So what you would need to do, just go onto Facebook page and search supporting each other in Newham Mancap. And what you can find, but you can find a lot of information what's happening in Newham, support groups and services, uh, great ideas. And majority of that group of children north above under fives and the families living in Newham. It's a private group. So if you're interested, please join us. Thank you. I think I finished with this slide. Eva, just yes. a question. Can parents yes. self-refer? Where? To Facebook group? Or um, are you talking about early positive approach to support training? I think um, EPATS. EPATS. Yes. Um, usually it goes through early notification form. So you would go to nursery children's centre or health visiting team, who else access it in there? And yes, I think your local, or can contact myself. And if I, if it's someone who not attending any nursery or child is home educated, or area single team as well can support with this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eva. We'll be coming back to you a bit later on. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Now I'd like to introduce you to Alberta. Alberta, are you here? Lovely, over to you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you can see me okay. Good. I, I'll take the slide and say yes. Um, 
I'm just going to buffer a bit on what Eva um, shared. Um, I'm a parent who has had lived experience of caring for a child with special needs for over six years in Newham. Um, and I can probably share in a lot of the experiences our parents that I've joined today have, have had. Um, and I guess I just wanted to really encourage parents um, to really sort of um, get alongside with um, giving feedback and working alongside the services that, you know, they're accessing to support their, their children's needs. Um, just want to share a bit of my experience in, in regards to MENCAP, because I'm going to be one of the family connectors that Eva spoke about just, just, just now. Um, and I found collaboratively working in this way um, with services and not only with MENCAP, um, which is something I'm doing um, only now, but other services like, for example, with Sophie's Specialist Health Visiting Group, um, and also with the um, uh, Skypes group, uh, so the group, the specialist services for young people and children, um, mainly based at uh, West Ham Lane. So they obviously provide speech and language support, occupational therapy support, physio support. Um, I've really had a great experience um, getting involved in uh, things like um, sitting on interview panels with them as well as um, providing feedback about their services. And it's been very beneficial for the care I gave my son. Um, and just to really encourage parents um, to sort of get involved and, and tap into those things. Um, Eva mentioned about the Family Connector role um, and um, the Family Connectors, which I would be one very soon, we will be supporting you parents to really get to an idea of what services offer in terms of opportunities to uh, participate in shaping the way, um, obviously, the service would, 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 would provide what is needed for you know, your children. I noticed in the chat, um, quite a, a few of you um, didn't actually get involved with the poll. And there may be reasons around that. And I would encourage parents to feed that back when the question and answer session opens up. Um, by dawn. Um, but yeah, it was really just to encourage parents um, as these opportunities come up, as these opportunities in the borough um, present themselves to really take on board um, working alongside services. Um, I'll leave you with a thought only just to encourage further. Um, my son, um, he passed away last year, um, sadly. Um, he had a prognosis of a very short life. Um, but because of the um, proactive involvement I had with services, um, I was able to learn a lot of therapies, do those therapies at home with him, which really improved on his development. And um, even his health professionals um, definitely said that, you know, what I was doing with him really supported the fact that he lived on longer than they expected. And he, he, he was doing very, very well in school communication, different things. Um, because of that involvement and also because um, I was able to get involved with services like community nurses, specialist health visiting. Um, we were even able to recruit um, one of the palliative care community nurses that provided direct care, supported us with direct care at home um, because I sat on an interview panel with the community nursing team. Um, so this is just to give just to share um, the opportunities that are out there, they're there for us parents to really benefit and the results are there. And obviously, please, by all means, navigate the new one page. Um, there is um, a, a contact there on, on the new one page and even within this webinar um, of who you can contact if you've got any questions, but please do take up these opportunities uh, because they do make a difference, they do. Thank you, thank you guys. No, thank you, Alberta. That's really useful advice, actually, in terms of taking up those um, offers and to make contact with services. Because we are there, and that's one of the reasons why we're having the workshop today is to raise awareness of what's available out there. So thank you, Alberta. Thank you. 
Right, so we're now going to, is it Hill visiting now? Is that right, Natalie? Yes. So, hello, Sophie. Would you like uh, to join me? Hello, hello, John. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right, thank you. We'd like to put your video on. Yeah, I'm so happy because I've seen Alberta on. So that has really excited me that I can't even stop my video. Now I can. <laughs> Thank you. Right, over to you, <laughs> Sophie. Hello, everyone, and good evening to all Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Good evening to all the parents uh, and all the professionals that are logged on this evening. I just want to say thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, hopefully, the information that we have, I've seen the polls coming through, and I've noted a lot of the things that you were talking about the sleep issues, the toilet training, the behavior support, all those issues that our health visitors support with. So it's very important that we have that connection. So I know I want to talk about the role of the specialist health visiting team within the child development service. But before I say that, I just wanted to say quite quickly, although the specialist health visitors are supporting children with additional needs, Sometimes if your child is not known to our service, very important to contact the generic health visitor so that they can signpost you for the right support. Because some children, because obviously our team is quite small, some children will require like the generic health visiting support, but they will have a named health visitor who is supported by the specialist health visitors. So I will, and I will talk about that a bit more because we have that very close link role which I think sometimes some parents don't understand where it's coming from. So health visiting as a whole is available to every child, not just in Newham, nationally, from not to five. Um, and actually it's from antenatal care to the age of five. So every child should be seen by a health visitor and every parent has got the right to access health visiting service while, whilst they're pregnant. And with us, if your child, for example, has got Down syndrome and that has been diagnosed antenatally, you should be expecting some support from us right from antenatal care. So who we are as health visitors, we are public health specialist nurses and we specialize in the area of complex developmental needs. So all the children with autism, with cerebral palsy, with global developmental delay, we support them. And what we do is we work in partnership with families to support and empower them to meet the challenges that are presented by a child with complex needs. We are kind of like the uh, connectors or if you would like the ones that um, advocate for you, we work co in collaboration with all the other professionals. So with our team, we sit in the child development service so that we are able to connect with the pediatricians, with the speech and language therapists, with the OTs, all the professionals that are working with your child, we are like the ones that advocate for you and connect all those services together. So we arrange things like team around the child meetings to be able to bring all the professionals together and discuss the needs of your child and make sure that we've got a joint support plan to, to support your child. We work very intensively with families. And when I say that, it's because our pathways, although we have the generic health visitors, with specialist health visitors, they are more on a needs basis. So if your child has got extra needs and we need extra support, we provide that extra support that you need. If we can go to the next one, please. I'll try and brush. I know we've got a few minutes left. So we provide information about services and benefits avail available to you both locally and nationally. So we work like with Family Fund, we work with you know, other organizations that can provide your, your um, services for children like Cordwell, they can give you, you know, Family Fund holidays that you can access for your child. And even you know, if you wanted extra things and funding, so a disability living allowance, we support with those applications and we provide guidance and support to parents as they navigate through the system. So if you come through to us, we're able to signpost you to the right services that can support you. 
We provide that support in a multidisciplinary way. So like I said before, that we work with all the other professionals acting as the first point of contact for parents and professionals who've got children with additional needs. So we're working very closely with all the other organizations. We do not necessarily work with all children, like I said before, but every child has got access to a health visitor. So if it's not a specialist health visitor, it will be a named generic health visitor, but they work very closely with us in supporting your child. So if we can move to the next one. So referrals to us are usually coming from other professionals and they usually come from like um, New Home Hospital when your child is born from the neonatal unit. We have some coming from the early year settings, from the child development service, from social care, and from other health practitioners, but it doesn't mean that, you know, if you've got your health visitor, your health visitor will be able to refer to us and we can discuss the needs of your child to be able to support your child. Um, if we can move to the next one, please. So um, like we said before, the referral criteria, we support from antenatal diagnosis. If there are any complex genetic conditions, before you know your child is born and we are aware of them, we start working with you from antenatal care. And then we provide obviously that new birth visit for babies with Down syndrome or any genetic conditions like cerebral palsy and complex developmental needs. We also start working with children when they've got delays requiring the involvement of three or more therapists. So children with autism, we work with them, we start working with them as soon as they're diagnosed because they are obviously um, referred to us straight away from diagnosis. We also provide uh, preschool or school, cho school age children up to the age of five who are attending like the multidisciplinary assessment. So that includes autism and the, any other form of diagnosis that might come after that. If we go to the next one, please. So we, we don't usually accept all children, obviously uh, accessing the child development service because sometimes it's only that they're being supported by one um, professional and that their needs are not as complex. It's not for us to decide. If you feel your child is very complex and you, know, you want us to have a look at your child's referral, we can always look and sign posts if it's not complex for us to be able to supporting them, we can always sign post to a generic health visitor who will also be supporting, but being supported by the health visitor because the team is quite small. Um, we don't have as many. So we've got about um, four health visitors at the moment and the nursery nurse. So it's not a big team, but then the requirements of the family that we support means we have to provide loads more support and you know the visits can be like so many of them. Children above two who meet the criteria must have had their ASQ completed before referral. So the, if, if for example, your child is coming to us and they haven't had their two year check, sometimes we want that to happen before they come to us. If we can move to the next one, please. So um, the multidisciplinary working means we work with all the other, you know, services. And there's also that bit where, because we are a specialist team, we've got two, three different teams. So one for HIV and the other one for perinatal mental health. So all these um, services are connected, but providing specialist support to, for, to families. We are co-located within the child development service, so it's easier for us to be able to connect with all the other professionals that are working with your child. So we provide that integrated working with pediatricians, speech and language therapists, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, the community children's nursing team, um, area centers obviously within the early notification panel and um, LES teams. And we discuss a lot more if we have children that we're working with and we want them to have like the two year LES nursery placement, we also have that connection with nurseries um, and doing all, obviously the integrated working. We make sure that there is a coordination of your child's care, so all that organizing the team around the family or team around the child meetings. We can move to the next one, please. 
So each child is put on a pathway. I'm not going to go into detail into this. So if there is like, for example, speech and language and communication needs, they go on to a pathway and each pathway will tell you what sort of support you have. So for example, uh, for children with speech, language and communication difficulties, they might end up with behavior support, toilet training, sleep, feeding and housing uh, workshops. And all of these workshops, they will be agreed with you after we've done an assessment, we'll do um, what we can like agree which ones are more important for you and where do we start? Because for you to do everything at once, it becomes difficult. So we go through all this and all these workshops, some of them we provide one-to-one -one, and some of them, they come in a group setting depending on the needs of the family. And if we move to the next one, please. Um, so children with chromosomal disorders, like for example, Down syndrome, they also have their own pathway and it will also show the kind of things that they have to access. So we provide them with the healthy child program. We do the uh, needs assessment and make sure that there's like feeding assessments and making sure that the parental well-being is also monitored because sometimes it's very difficult when you are, you know, working with a child with um, additional needs and to be able to arrange all the other things that you need in the family home to be able to support your other children. So we discuss all those kind of things and we refer obviously to social care if there is need for extra support. And same thing with the neurodevelopmental pathway. So children with, uh, um, let's say cerebral palsy, we also work very closely with the pediatricians. We do like the pre-assessment home visit where we gather more information and that information is then used for us to decide what level of support will bring. The other thing that we need to um, realize as well is we obviously make sure that there is that help with transition. So we arrange like the team around the child meeting for transition. If your child is known to us, we make sure we arrange those transition processes with the schools and make sure that there is care plans available and made available for your child before they start school. So we're going to go to the next one, please. Yeah, so our contact details are here. Uh, if you need to call us, uh, the our main office number is there and our email address is there and accessible to parents as well. There's also another email address for um, health visitors. If you, your child is not known to the specialist health visitors and you want generic health visitors, I'll put that on the chat as well, um, including um, the telephone number that you can contact. If you're not able to get hold of us on that number, which is very unlikely, you can also get hold of us on the single point of access number, which is the generic health visiting number, which is um, got a, a, a duty health visitor online all the time to help you and to support you. So I think that's the end from me. Thank you. Thank you, I Sophie. Uh, yes, there is one question. So one question that always come up when I'm talking to parents is, okay, the service is fantastic, not to five, but what happens for five and overs? What can they access that is similar to your service? I don't know if you can answer it. Oh, well, the thing is with children over five, we've got the school health service. And if there are any particular things that you want um, that is similar to health visiting, I think what happens is with us, most of the times we, we hand over to the SENCOs, like so the school SENCOs, but they don't provide like a health visiting support. It's just to connect you with other Pro, pro, like professionals and making sure that your child is well and safe at school. The school health service provides something similar, but because we've got such a small team of school nurses, it's not as intense as what health visitors do. And because your child is spending a lot more time in school, it makes sense for the responsibilities to be taken from the school. But what, we, what I advise to families is that if your child is over five, and we don't usually say completely don't come to us. You can come and access our parent support groups because you can still gain a lot of information. For us, we say if we've empowered you right from the start, if you've accessed our services and we've empowered you, 
you will be able to hopefully move on. The transition to school should not be as hard because you are probably empowered to be able to support your child. But it doesn't stop you from accessing our parent support group and the parent support groups they run um, every first Friday of the month. So we've got the next one coming up on the 5th of March. So you can still access that. And we've got really lovely uh, professionals that come and support us in terms of delivering that. So it depends on what the families are talking about. I think if I was talking, talking about, you know, the disability living allowance has been one of the things that parents have been talking about. And our next one will be, we'll be doing the disability living allowance with families and that. So we've got, you know, loads of different um, services that work with us. Sandia sometimes they come to do a workshop with parents on advocacy and all that. And that is accessible to even families that have got children over five. So you don't have to think, oh, if the health visitor is not available for me anymore, what can I do? You can come and access that parent support group. And you can also have other parents support, you know, supporting you to have a network of families that can be supporting you around as well. So that's, yeah. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you for that. Um, just to say all the additional things that Sophie's mentioned, um, we will be able to send that out to you in terms of the times of the groups. If you contact us on strengthening.families at newham.gov.uk, which is in the chat box now, you'll get a copy of the slides and any additional information that we have for you just conscious of the time and we still got a lot of people to get through what we're going to do we're going to go to tessa tessa in the room yes i am hi hello tessa hi. <laughs> so if you would say a bit about newham send yes service and then what we do we bring all the panelists on and answer any some questions before we leave today is that all right all right yeah lovely all right over to you okay Hi everyone, I hope everyone is well. Um, nice to see those panelists that I can see. Hi Sophie. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll just, I won't be long at all. So just to say a bit about Sendias. Um, so we are Newham Special Education Needs and Disability Information Advice Support Service. Um, and we offer a service that is free, confidential, um, impartial and it's important to say that we work at arm's length for, from the local authority. So what that means is, is that there is a duty for each local authority to provide a service that families can come to to get advice and guidance about um, the special educational needs, rights aspects um, in, in relation to your child or your children. So we don't share any information with any other service. Um, unless there's a safeguarding issue. So you can come and talk to us in confidence about some of the challenges you may be experiencing. Um, and we support around a range of issues. So education, healthcare and care plans is one of them. Um, so from, uh, you know, wanting to know how to request an EHCP assessment um, to looking at your draft document when you receive it, um, if you're unhappy with your draft document, that might mean that you need support um, making a, a, um, an appeal to tribunal. We can support in that area as well. Uh, we support with exclusions, you know, where your, where your child or children have a special education need and disability. Um, we provide meeting support. We provide support within schools. So if you have a school meeting, if there's a particular issue um, and you need meeting support, we can provide that as well. Um, so all of our team are uh, trained in special educational needs law and we all um, are sort of qualified to do that and we try to keep up to all the latest changes. Um, we also provide training um, in a group forum. So recently we provided training with um, in partnership with the New and Parent Forum. So if those of you are not part of a particular parent group who you would like some support and um, new and parent forum is a good place to get that and um, lots of parents with different children who have a, um, a, a wide range of needs it's a pan disability forum so um and they are quite active in working with the local authority as well it's a good place to get information from um 
Yeah, so, you know, we're a small team. Um, we're a small team at the moment, so we're doing our best to support. So you can refer, it's, we're our self-referral service, so the best way to contact would be to send your request for support via email. We have a five-day working response time as well um, for parents. So um, once you send in your request, uh, someone will look at it and you'll get a response within five days. Someone will contact you and have a chat about what some of the issues are and you'll be signed, assigned a case officer, um, depending on what the issue is. Um, yeah, just like other services now, we're working online. We used to be based in Tunmarsh and for now we can't and we don't anticipate um, being based anywhere at the moment. So we're working online as best as we can. We are aware that some families um, don't have access to IT um, services and, and struggle to get online and that is an issue. And we are trying to support as best as we can now. Um, so yes, that's, that's us. Um, I think there's another slide there. Yeah, so that's, that flyer was designed by our young people. So we have a young people steering group. Um, so the participants in that steering group are aged 14 to 25. Um, it's a small group at the moment, but we're working really well with this group in supporting the young people in um, getting their voices heard, in active participation, um, uh, do it. Like we met with the mayor um, a few weeks ago and had a really good, honest conversation about with the mayor about the challenges for them, for them as young people with disabilities in Newham, um, things that are not accessible for them, um, post sixteen issues, education issues, social issues. Um, so we're, you know, we're working with that group to really empower their voices. Um, so that was actually, that flyer was designed by them. So if you have any young people that you feel might benefit from that sort of um, engagement, um, please let us know um, and we can um, support them and join the group. We also have a parent and carer steering group as well. Um, so if you want to be part of the parent carer steering group, it's a good way to engage with the service, know what's happening with the service, um, any sort of highlight any issues that you may want us to bring forward as a service to, let's say, the SEN team, um, which we do often. We meet with the SEN team and we have conversations about some of the issues that um, parents are, are challenging, are facing. Um, so, yeah, if you want to be part of the SEN group, just like I said, send us an email and let us know. And I think that's really it. Thank you, Tessa. Thank You're you very welcome. much. I am conscious that. Um, We've run out of time, but I didn't want to leave unless you, we answer some of your questions that you have today. So if I can ask all the panelists to put yourself on video, and I am going to put some of the questions that have come up. So all the panelists that are here today, and uh, we'll, we'll try and answer some of them. And those that we don't answer today, we will come back to you all with those answers. Okay. I think we've got Paula as well. Paula. Hello, Paula. I think Paul is here. Right. Sorry, I'm just on oh, no. I've frozen. Oh, I think your sister's not working, so don't worry about that. Um, I have the first question actually. Is is Carrie here as well? I don't think Carrie's here. I am here, but I can't um I haven't had my screen on the video put back on. <laughs> oh, you it says that only the host can do it, so that's why I'm not on, on view. Okay, two seconds. Oh, I don't know if it will work for me. Okay, there we go. Hi, everybody. Yeah, lovely. Okay, lovely. Okay, so the first question that came up was around the Send Local Offer page, and that is quite difficult to navigate. And is there any plans to make it more user-friendly? I don't know if anyone wants to come in on that one. Um, can I? Yeah, go on. That's fine. Okay, so um, I know that because um, we're part of the SEND Improvement Board, and I know there has been lots of conversations about the accessibility of um, the local offer, um, and so they are um, looking at making it more accessible, making it more, I've certainly pointed out that it probably needs to be a bit more, not a bit more, a lot more um, visual, less wordy, you know, um, so actually, for you know parents who 
who struggle with their own learning difficulties or learning needs, you know, can actually have more visuals to go alongside what's on the local offer. Um, and things like, I know it does have language um, translation and stuff, but it's not obvious. You kind of have to hunt around for it. Um, so those are things that are being currently discussed. Um, that's as much as I can say. When the changes will happen, I don't know, but I do know that it is being discussed by the SEND Improvement Board. Yeah. Sorry, Tessa, yeah. yeah, so could, I just, could I just add to that? Um, do you know if there's opportunities that would come for then users to be able to trial the, 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 the new site when it comes out, just sort of like a pilot, just so that users themselves can give feedback as to the new. Well, from what I've understood, it's not going to be a new site because in terms of the content, um, in terms of the layout, apparently they can't change that, but what they can do is add additional content or remove content and put things in its place. And, I, and um, the Senate Improvement Board is also comprised of um, parents um, from the Parent Forum. So I would imagine that there will be some opportunity for parents to actually have a look at it and play around with it um, before it's at, before any firm changes have made. So in the Senate Improvement Board, there's a lot of professionals, but the new and parent forum are also a part of that board as well. So yeah, the consultation I believe will definitely happen. Oh, that would be good. I, I can't I can't see it not happening because you know they're quite a, quite a vocal group of parents. So and that's something that they have suggested before. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Sure. Thank you for that one. Uh, Paula, I wanted to bring you in because one of the questions and, and what came up in the word cloud was respite. So I'm just wondering from an AAA perspective, you have anything that you'd like to share about that? <laughs> I think you're mute. You're mute, Paula. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm actually from AAA, um, Ark in a Park, based in Canning Town, and we do number, run a number of projects and that, but obviously due to lockdown and everything else, we've, not, we've been very limited on what we've been able to offer. So um, we, are, we are hoping to get up and running again in April time and that and also looking at um possibly the possibility of running something over the easter period as well so we are so regarding respite depends if there's just you know obviously we can't provide any weekends away but we do run a cycling club and we can have we can have provide um support for six young people within that for um to learn how to cycle um one to one support there is a small fee of two pounds and that but then what we need parents to do is to make it we do take self-referrals they don't have to be referred by an agency or anything like that so um so we currently do that we um we are running a project called positive transitions and that and that is for the age of 16 to 24 and that, and they meet twice a week plus they, plus we're actually just developing a, a 10 week course program for them as well so you know so things around gardening music exercise um well-being um, cooking and all that sort of thing. So we're actually developing a, um, a, a ten-week program now um, for young people. So that'd be yeah, another form of respite. We do, we do a Sunday club, which is um, we are hoping because the funding's jump coming to an end. We're hoping to be able to fund it ourselves. So we actually provide a, um, a three-hour session in the morning for the younger age group from five to eleven years, and then twelve to sixteen years in the afternoon. And that so um, we, we try and keep that aimed at parents who are not receiving. Any anything so if they're not getting any additional support so they're not having like um carers going in to take their children out at weekends and, and things like that or if they're not accessing any services during the um, school holidays um through the borough and so on so we try and keep it so it is for parents who are not receiving um, no support at all and that because we find it's very important that they actually get some form of um, respite themselves and, and there are a lot of families out there who are not receiving that um, and so if you are if you are one of those families please make yourself known to us and we do as that you know we try our best to you know to offer something um regarding the holidays and things like that we are currently obviously we just run a, a project um a, a week scheme for the borough um obviously they made the referrals because obviously it's children what are known to them but um if they if children don't attend and, and um, what we tend to do is actually contact the families who are known to us um, to fill in the gaps and that we, we, what we don't want to do is waste the space 
and that what we can't yeah we don't like wasting space and that project is obviously from the age of five up to 16 year olds and that, and um, I assume that we will do exactly the same during the summer um, during Easter um uh, currently we only took nine children during half term um, normally we can take up to 25 which we were doing not last year but the year before because obviously due to lockdown it's obviously restrictions have actually you know it's caused a lot of um, you know restrictions all over but you know we are hoping to actually start you know looking at um increasing our numbers you know we've got covid stuff in place um guidance and everything else so we've been doing you know temperatures taking um you know staff are being regular tested and so on and 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 so we do that we've got we are hoping to bring back our family days um discos for our young people but obviously all this stuff would have to be booked in we you know we can't have floods of people coming in because obviously it, it, you know we our numbers won't be you know we, we have to go follow the government guidelines but we're doing you know we're trying to get back as much as we can um obviously we used to have cams coming on saturdays so parents need to access cams and and didn't have any you know and can't get hold of them or maybe just come along um cams and also while, while they were there they were got, got to know about our services we, you know, we do sports stuff as well which we're hoping to develop on saturdays uh, multi-sports for young people with additional needs as well and Thanks obviously, in saying okay. yes as well, obviously they they do want to. I was just going to say, Paula, because um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to send everything that you've said to them. So <laughs> if everyone could just send an email to say you'll like a copy of the slides and any additional information to strengthening.families at noom.gov.uk, we will send all well, of that information say, to yeah, people that say, take in. And quite a few people want to know your details yeah so. i was going to say by all means share my information i can always send out referral forms i can self-refer and that so by all means share my information and we'll and we'll get back to them lovely thank you paula okay. uh, natalie can we just have one more question i think we've got time for one more question and then we'll look at others and send some responses out later yep sure let me just get them up um is this on the chat or on Slido? On the chat. On the I chat. might be able to find one. How can I support my child that has changing behaviours better? Quite a wide one. Any, any thoughts around that? I know it's a bit difficult with that question. I think that... <laughs> Sorry, who was... Who? It was a parent. It's anonymous. Okay. <laughs> Um, hello, uh, I'm Christos uh, Papagagori, I'm a senior teacher at JFK, uh, which you may know that it's the only special needs school uh, located in the borough of Newham. Um, I just now picking that question up um, and being here with you uh, that I'm delighted of, um, I would just like to let you know that uh, we can come on board in future sessions and support uh, support you with um, um, with issues and concerns and needs such as these ones because we pride ourselves in uh, uh, supporting young children and um, young adults with uh, behaviors of concern. Um, we're using positive behavior support and we have high expertise team here uh, and we can potentially look uh, into organizing a very targeted session in the future, Dawn. Mm -hmm. uh, we can look into that, um, where we can share tips, we can explore further the backgrounds that you actually address and we can explore advice and suggestions um, to support you. Lovely, thank you very much. And Sophie, you wanted to come in? Yeah, I was just going to add that, um, obviously with behavior challenges, it's very important that we do an assessment of the family. So we wouldn't be able to give like, this is what you do without having an understanding of what your child's needs are. So there needs to be like a one-to-one -one assessment of your child's needs. And with that, you are then provided like tailored support and the tailored support depends on your family's, um, you know, capability. We use like uh, uh, behavior approaches that you need probably to start 
um, using in your own home, but we cannot be able to give that straight away like that. What I would suggest, I don't know how old this child is, if they can share their details with you, Don, um, if they are a child, whether they are school aged or a child that we can work with as health visitors, I'll be able to provide some support through that. So I'm not sure how old the child is. So if you can get just a bit more detail done and we can get back to them and actually give them the right support um, for them. Is that okay? That's brilliant. Um, I'm just conscious of time. We've kept you over the time, but I think it's been really useful. And maybe we're going forward as a panel, we can continue having those conversations together. I think there is a, something useful in having everybody in the same space. Alberta, would you like to end it for me? <laughs> no pressure then. Um, yeah, no, it, it was just regarding the question about the behavioral uh, support. Um, just to encourage from a parent point of view, that parent that um, obviously as they access the support Sophie mentioned, as well as Christos, um, very much encouraged just to go in with a proactive view of learning. Um, so get as much as you can to that parent involved with um, obviously the approaches that um, may be suggested, used to really support you doing them at home continuously. Um, I can't stress that enough um, with my own experience with my son we really found he, def, he didn't have behavioral issues per se, but um, issues around communication and speech, which made it very difficult at times to understand what he was saying in the early years, that proactive sort of involvement, learning therapies and approaches and tapping into the, I don't know if your child is at school yet or nursery, but tapping into you know children's centers, et cetera, courses that are being offered in, in the community for yourself to educate yourself um, so that at home you're doing these things. And I was just going to add on to what was mentioned around respite. I wondered, Dawn, whether there could be an opportunity where we, and I could work with Natalie on this, we could come up with a list of charities that also provide respite. I know with my son, we, we use React, Family Fund, Codwell Children, we were able to go on family holidays. I'm just thinking of obviously with the roadmap we've got out of the pandemic, families would want to start looking at those things. Um, and I think it would be helpful on the new um, website to maybe have a list of those charities and how parents can access them. Um, and also mentioning hospices like Richard House, they recently started a hospice at home service as well, uh, where the respite actually comes to parents who may not be ready yet to let go of their children and take them into respite directly, but the hospice actually comes into your home. Uh, a, a professional comes in, they all have the protected equipment, gear, et cetera, um, and, and provide respite within the house with the children whether, so parents can rest. Yeah. Very useful advice, Alberta. And yeah, I'm happy to work with you and, and the rest of the team on this. Pippa, I know you wanted to come in. Hi, yeah, might say my name is Pippa Charnowska and I'm a, um, I'm a speech and language therapist. I work for the Language Communication and Interaction Service and we're part of the Specialist Education Support Services. So that's um, our service, which is the Language Communication Interaction Service, ELSIS, um, Complex Needs and Disability Service and um, the Sensory Service, which is for children with hearing impairment and visual impairment. Um, I'm really sorry that there was a misunderstanding and we thought that our slide had been sent to you and it hadn't been sent to you. So we're really sorry about that. So my, myself and Kari are here to represent that service. And what I wanted to say was, um, I know Sophie was talking about the answer the question about what happens when children get to five and what's next. And I think it's fair to say that our service is next um, as part of a big joined up approach So we work closely alongside with our resource provision schools. And um, I know that Raj has really strong links with JFK as well. So Raj is our group manager. I just wanted to let you know that we will make sure that we the slide that we have and the information that we have, which is on the local offer, will be sent to you so that that can be distributed to families. And I'm just I'm sorry that that we thought that that had been sent to you and it hadn't. So many apologies. And Thanks for letting me just to um, update the parents that are still here. Thank you, Pippa. Can you just say the name of your service again? Somebody wants to know. 
so we um, we are, I work for the language, myself and Kari work for the Language Communication and Interaction Service, and we support children with autism and developmental language disorder, but we are part of a bigger group of learning support services called the Specialist Education Support Services. So there are three teams, discrete specialist service within that special education support service. Thank you very much. Right, we do have to end now, but I want to say thank you to all the panelists for coming today. Thank you to the parents for taking the time and staying with us over the time. So that's really good. On the slides, I didn't get to go for all the additional services that are available to you, but I would encourage every single one of you to contact us. I would say again, strengthen.families at noom.gov.uk. Whether you want the slides, whether you want to know about some of the support groups, whether you want any information at all, please just send it to us out. If you want to talk about your particular circumstances, we will get you to the support that you need. So please contact us via email, okay? But thank you to everybody. Enjoy the rest of the evening and we will see you soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.